Hi everybody, it's Joe Krug from FinSuite. In this video, we're going over the FinSuite CMS library for Webflow. We're in the docs going through the sort section. Let's sort through items inside our collection list. We can use this with the filter component or we can use it without the filter component. We built it separately because sometimes you just wanna sort. You're not looking to filter, you're just changing the order of elements on the page. Here in sort, what we're going to do is allow the user to toggle between showing things in A to Z and then Z to A. We can choose which columns and which Webflow CMS fields that they are sorting by. It's very customizable and very simple to set up. Use cases, you wanna set up custom sorts for the user to control. You can set up complex ones, simple ones, easy ones, whatever you want. Let's go into how to use it here. The very first thing we're going to do is run a function immediately and have a new FN Suite CMS library instance targeted at the blog post list. We're storing all of this new instance inside a variable called custom blog posts. If this was way too fast for you and you need this slower, please go to the get started video where I go through these steps slow and in detail. Now we have our custom blog post variable ready to use throughout the rest of the code. We're going to run our sort component on this list. And look at this, the sort component is going to have our original outer brackets. It's also going to have these options. Check it out, we have options, options. And in here with animation, options, options. Great, let's go through this first option. We have our sort trigger. Sort trigger is the class of the button that will serve as a trigger. This is going to be the same for all of your sort buttons, whether it is a single sort button or 10 different sort buttons. All of the items have, must have this same class, sort button. Sort reverse, true or false? True is if you want the original first click sort to be in reverse. If this is set to true, when the user first clicks, it's going to sort Z to A. If this is false, the first click is going to sort from A to Z. The reason why you might wanna set this to true is if you are already displaying this list sorted A to Z. Let's say it's a list of clients on the page inside Webflow natively, you are sorting through that list A to Z. On the first click, you want it to reverse the sort to go from Z to A. In that case, you set this to true and that first click will be a reversed sort, not an A to Z sort. Great, active class. This is the class that's going to be added to the sort trigger when that sort is active. So let's say I have a sort of clients and colors and services. I click on clients and now the list is being sorted by clients. It is going to also get that sort button that is sorting by the clients is also going to get my add-on class of active. And now the user knows that it, they are sorting by clients. So this can change the background color or the text color or border color or anything. Or use a background image to flip an arrow up or down. A lot of different things you can do here. This is totally customizable. Please note that you do not need the dot here for a class. It's already defined that it is a class. Great, and now animation. Animation only happens when things leave and enter the page. It's perfect for something like load more or filter. When you have these things, there are items entering and or leaving the page, and that's when animation actually happens. We are sorting items. Nothing is entering, nothing is leaving. So this animation, I prefer at zero. You can turn it off, you can have that duration set to zero so the sort happens without any weird kind of motion. You can play around with this. If you set a duration, if you set some options, it's not really gonna turn out as you think. 
Uh, there's gonna be some snapping, some movement, but in my opinion, not very clean. So I like my sorts in duration zero. So they happen right away, instantly. Now let's go over the code explanation. We just went through all this. We're gonna cover it again, make sure we're super clear on it. Here we have our custom blog post, which is the variable that we've been using to run our components. We have our sort trigger, which is the class of the button that will be used to filter the items. So if I go down to here, we have our sort trigger right here, sort button. This would be how we'd set that sort trigger up. We have a class of sort button on our sort by project number button. And that is exactly what we would put here in the code, sort button on our sort trigger. Sort reverse. Option to make the initial click reversed. I just went over this. I won't explain the whole thing again, but true is sort Z to A on first click. False is sort A to Z on first click. And keep in mind that if your list is already sorted A to Z and this is set to false, on that first click, nothing will happen visually. It's already sorted. So the list won't move at all. So that's why we put this in here to not confuse the user when they click and nothing happens. Active class, this is the class that's added to the button when it is actively being sorted. When those elements controlled by that button are being sorted, it gets the active class. Animation, enable, true or false. You wanna turn it on, you wanna turn it off. Duration, default is Point two, I do recommend to set this to zero when using sort, but up to you, go around and play with it. Sort by, this is the data attribute that we put on sort triggers to tell them what they're sorting by. So we have our sort by project, and we need to tell the library what sort by project is. And what we do is apply a name of sort by, and the value, is the class of the text that we want to filter by. This one says sort by project number and it's actually gonna be sorting by year. This one is sorting by project title, this one's sorting by year. And you can see that these are classes, this is not text. It's a class because we're targeting the text within this class. So if all of my years, 2020, 19, 18, any year that's being generated inside CMS has this class year text, now we can sort by 2020, 2019, 18, and so on. Same thing with project title. Maybe we have Apex Co, Bombera Co, Cool Co, and it's A, B, and C. If all of those elements have the class of project title, we're gonna be filtering by the text within that class. Awesome, super easy, and that's it. We don't need to do anything else here to make this sort work. It's much more simple and less steps than filtering. If you have more questions about this, if you want to see live examples, please go to the walkthrough examples where I go through this live on a published site. You can see this working and see it with your dynamic lists. That's effing sweet.